This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted to be joined with Charlie Edwards at the Hilton. Solid six rounds of the bank yesterday, a lengthy layoff. Um, after everything, how are you feeling, mate? How's things been? Yeah, I'm feeling good, mate. It feels good to be back. It's been um, a long, frustrating time being out of the ring. Um, so it was nice to get the um, close to the last chapter, and it's um, we're back in there now. And um, yeah, I'm really good. I was. Um, I enjoyed it being back in the ring with the little gloves on, um, letting some shots go. It was nice. Um, I was in there with a tough opponent as well who'd come to fight, who'd come to win, um, who I've heard that uh, some people have had real big trouble with. Um, and it, it was a tough opponent. I put super bantam weight limit the day before weighing. Um, he came in at 56.5 kilograms. I had to come in at 56. I wanted to get it a bit lighter, more close to the bantamweight division, but he couldn't make it. So I just, you know, I just thought, fuck it, I'll take that. Um, and yeah, performed really well. Um, after the first round, felt like I was, I had never left, you know. Um, the geezer was a, a big, big puncher, heavy puncher, um, and he came to really win. Um, I've got to remember, being a former world champion, I've got, um, got an X on my head, you know. Um, when these game like he was a Nicaraguan South American fighter comes over if he if he took me out and if he knocked me out or done something to me it gives him his golden ticket golden opportunity you know so um, it was a good fight to have um, we picked a very tough game strong opponent who many fighters will seem to dodge uh, and I've heard people some fighters even pull out against last minute so um, it's a um, it was good and I'm glad to be back and now it's just about getting the activity, get back out there as soon as possible now. What was that whole experience like yesterday where, you know, it's been a while since you've sort of been in the ring and it's been a lot of inactivity of, you know, not only sort of those two years were sort of a very hard two years for you. So was it, uh, how was that sort of experience overall sort of just getting the, making that ring walk? You know, you've done it so many times before, but never sort of in, in these sort of circumstances like you did yesterday. So how was that sort of experience as a whole? Um, yeah, no, listen, I'm ultra-professional in everything I do. As you can see at the weigh-in, even though I was above the weight, I could have made my championship weight. Um, I chose not to drain myself of the water. So um, you can see at the weigh-in, I'm prepared like I'm fighting for a world title fight, and I'd say every fight like that, I've always put 120% into my training. Um, even though I've been out of the ring for, for 18 months, I haven't been out of the gym, and that showed in the, that fight. Um, it's out there on YouTube and it showed that what is ring rust? No, there weren't really any ring rust. You know, the first round, just getting back into it, getting used to the small gloves maybe. But then I boxed to like a, a punch perfect performance, um, boxed really well. Um, so the experience was good. Um, it, was, it was nice. It was nice to box on a smaller hall show at the Bowlers. Um, never boxed there before, so it's another venue that it was exciting. It was new. Um, but yeah, you know what? Like. I want to be an old school type of fighter, you know? This inactivity bullshit that has fucked my career and it hasn't been my fault. That's all I can say on that. I've been wanting to go, been raring to go, but it just, politics sides of boxing just didn't happen for me. Um, so I'm free, I'm a free agent. Um, that was my first step on being a free agent. So I chose instead of waiting out for one of the bigger shows that I was supposed to be on, to just, cut my ego aside and be like an old school fighter just go and fight go and fight and go and get what I need to do get that first step on the journey that I need to take you know um, not be one not let the ego get the better of me and um, just just I'm here to become a world champion so that was the, the, the um, necessary step on the journey that I felt and my team felt and my manager Joe Gallagher and my trainer felt I needed to take and that's why we got a good tough strong game opponent at Kabang and at, weight at, at Super Bantam weight when I'm fighting at Bantam. Another thing you just said, you sort of said you cut the ego. Was that a difficult thing to, to do? Because you said there, you're, you're a world champion, you know, you've been a world champion. You could easily have said, you know, I'm going to wait out, I want to fight on a big bill, this and that. But you put the ego aside and, you know, you sort of said you enjoyed to fight on a small hall show. Was it a hard thing to do to sort of cut that ego away? Because it, egos can be a downfall in boxing in a way. Definitely, definitely. When, when, when um, Joe brought it to me, 
and we discussed it. At first, I was like wanting to kick my heels in the ground, and I was like, nah, I'm too good to be doing that. I'm not doing that. Not saying that that um, people who box on small hall shows aren't good, because they are all good um, in their own right. But when you've been to the top and fought in front of 20,000 people for a world title, I got fixated that, no, no, I want to be back in the arena, because it gives me that fulfillment and that like buzz and that thing. But I, when, I, when I really took a look in the mirror and, and really like had real conversations with myself I thought nah I said none of this ego shit take that away from it what does it matter if it's getting you close to become a world champion that's all that matters think the bigger picture not short term you know and we're we're in this day and age built so much on what other people think about us like it was it was daunting for me because I was worrying what everyone was going to think that I'm fighting on a smaller hall show and this promoter, that promoter and stuff, but re- really, reality, who gives a fuck? Do you know what I mean? People might say stuff, but it doesn't matter, because when I'm world champion and I look back, this fight is going to be the biggest meaningful fight of my career. Like, after such a long layoff, being trapped for such a long time, to then take that first step, and then where it will go, I, I believe it's a t- it was a test. Like, a, from, 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 from the higher powers, from the universe, like to cut that ego and how much do you really want this boxing game and I had to take what was necessary and that was that first step and one thing I'll always say you know five sort of five percent of what we saw yesterday of you stepping in the ring that's five percent of the journey how much emphasis was this 18 months this two years you had off how difficult was that journey to was that a difficult thing to step in the ring after sort of all the long layoff of you know anything things that are out of your hands um, no, it wasn't a difficult journey to step into the ring because it's what I've wanted and what I've wanted for the last 18 months is to fight, to fight, to fight. Um, so it weren't a difficult step. It was what I've been praying for, what I've been really focusing on and what I've been wanting more than anything. It was a time to get that step going and I took it. You know, um, I could have waited out because I was promised some other things but it meant I would be out of the ring even longer. And when I got free, I was like, nah, I want to fight. Uh, and I took that fight, and now I'm going to be fighting again in a not too distant future. And time to get active, man. End of the year, who knows, I could be world champion. What would you say you've learned the most uh, after these? Off, what have you learned the most from these two years of being out of the ring? I've learned a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot about the boxing game. Um, I can't really go into much detail about that. I've learned a lot, but I've learned to just focus on the here and the now. Focus on what you can control. And that is, or that was for me, my work ethic. Turning up every day, using every day wisely, even when the days were shit and I really didn't feel like it. I pushed through that emotional turmoil, that frustration, and I still got up, showed up for myself. And it showed how much I've developed as a fighter as a human being and as a man and um, yeah it, it, it showed and it's going to show in the not too distant future every time I'm getting more fights more fights and I get bigger platforms and that it's going to show and yeah just not not to give up on myself not to let the outside noise affect where I'm going to in this boxing game would you say you've learned to be patient as well um, they say patience is a virtue I wanted it yesterday <laughs> you know, um, I think it's always going to be a struggle for me to be patient. Um, I want everything here and now, um, but that's what us hungry fighters want. We want it here and now. But sometimes you've got to have faith and belief that what is meant for you will never pass you. And um, it's just not your time yet. And um, dedicating on myself day in, day out, focusing on number one and getting better, stronger, developing with my coach, um, Joe. Um, yeah it's all going to make sense and when my time comes and when I get my opportunity I'm going to take it with both hands and another thing I wanted to say is it a lot of credit to yourself where you talk about your mental resilience because you know it could easily anyone could sort of be in the ring being frustrated it's easy for you to sort of say you know just like sack it off but you know you stayed sort of consistent and stayed in the gym is that sort of a lot of credit to yourself would you say 100% I want to pat myself on the back more than anything because I know a lot of fighters who had reached the top, become world champion, had all the glitz and the glamour and being in all the big arenas, fighting on Sky Sports, um, being promoted by Eddie Hearn. Um, when, they, when it was to go in this dark turmoil stage, a lot of people would have walked away from the sport. They would have found other things to do. Like I've set myself up nicely in Portugal um, and 
I could have found different revenues and different things to go down, but at the end of the day, I'm hungry for this sport. I've lived and breathed this sport from 11 years of age. I've given it everything, I've given it my life, um, and I will continue to do so until I reach what I believe I can, re can, can achieve in the sport. After getting this win yesterday, you look now, you, you, you've been a world champion, you know what it takes. I'm sure you want that again, you know, is that sort of what you're looking at now, you know, pushing out and, you know, I'm going to get that belt back again? One million percent. Um, I know I'm going to get that belt back. It's just a matter of time. Um, and this time it will be at bantamweight, you know, um, at a weight where I can rule at for a, for a long time if I decide to. I also know that there could be opportunities if it's safe to do so at super flyweight. Um, obviously, I'd have to get the scientists and my nutritionist in, involved in that, whether it would just be for one fight, for a world title fight, um, if, if it can do, be done safely pick up another world title at that weight and then um, later on in my career there's definitely going to be the super bantamweight limit when I fill out more and grow into the weights um, and who knows one day I could be four weight world champion by the end of my career and retire um, a happy happy man and be the um, British Manny Pacquiao. What do you make of sort of the world level of bantamweights where you look at them as potential targets for you? Yeah, the, listen, the, the world level bantamweights are absolutely booming at the minute because they, the titles are all up for grabs and there's some really great fighters out there. Um, and it's going to be a very interesting division over the um, next eight, 18 months, probably. Um, I know the fighters are fighting and contesting for the belts now. Um, I know um, Jason Maloney's holding um, the WBO title and that's a fight I would be fully confident in, in taking and, and, and winning. Um, and he's, I think, ranked number one in the d division at the moment. So who knows, funny things have happened. I've got my, um, my activation now. Um, next fight, I'll get higher up into the world rankings. I think I've got my world ranking back already. But, um, and then who knows, I might get, he might look at me like an easy touch and uh, I might get called up to fight him. So that'll be the plan. Um, that's what I, I'd like to aim for. Uh, some great fighters out there in the Bantamweight division. And it's really... It's a, it's, the, the champions now will get the pick of their voluntaries in the top 15 or top 10 so um, we'll see we've just got to position ourselves correctly and who knows I might get the call 100% well we're here today for your brother Sonny um, will it sort of be, be a bit weird to see him sort of is it uh, after I mean I don't want to sort of go too much into it but would it be a sort of a, is it going to be a weird thing to sort of see him again after sort of all the, all the, all the things that happened to back and forth Nah, not, no. It's gonna it, listen. We, we've been messaging back and forward. You know, he he messaged me before my fight um, last night, and he was telling me just make sure you be, be on the game for this opponent. He's heard things. That he's very strong, very dangerous. Early, he's had people out on their feet. So listen, me and my brother, we love each other and we care for each other very dearly. Um, all this like back and forth online and that it worked, didn't it? Yeah. We played the game. We're in everyone's mouths. Do you know what I mean? Like. They're talking either Sonny Edwards, Charlie Edwards, the Edwards name is winning, it's pumping the, um, the views up and it, we played a great game. So um, yeah, I'm here for, to support him and um, I believe he's going to do a really good performance tonight. I believe he will, he will stop Campos um, in a stylish way. I don't think he's going to go out there silly and try and bomb him out, but I think he could stop him. And um, yeah, I'm here to support, here to shout him on and um, yeah. I look forward to it. I was going to say, what is that sort of like that brotherly bond, especially in boxing? You see it so much, like you just see it in, in life anyway. Like you can't be a, a sort of a bond of a brother, and it, it must be a special thing between you two when you're sort of of a similar trajectory, has similar careers, and you've done so much similar in your life. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. The brotherly bond will never go. If we have an argument today, if we have an argument last week, if we have. Mate, the brotherly bond never goes. You know what I mean? You love each other dearly, and when the shit hits the fan, you're always there for each other. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're connected. Like, we're connected. We're brothers. We're blood brothers. Do you know what I mean? We're connected. When something's not right, you can feel it. Um, when you've got worry or panic, you want to be there, like, and, and help it. Like, he thought maybe I could have took my eye off the ball last night on my fight, and he didn't want to see me slip up. So what did he do? He reached out to me. And um, that's what brothers do. We're there through, through thick and thin, you know. Um, it's funny. The comments online have been great. Like, we've really got people going about this, and it's good. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, let's be real. Like, will we ever fight each other? No. Do you know what I mean? We, of course, we will. We love each other dearly. This is a dangerous, dangerous sport. It's the hurt game, you know. Um, we wouldn't want to hurt each other. You know, money's money. It don't mean a fucking thing at the end of the day. It's good because you can provide for your family, and you can 
enjoy goodness of it and be comfortable. But we wouldn't put our relationship like that on the line. 100%, Charlie. Just want to say thank you for sort of taking the time to speak to me. I appreciate it. I don't want to disturb you when you're having food. And well on the win and well on all coming back and overcoming everything you overcome. So well done, man. Thank, thank you. Cheers. Thank you.